David Seymour. Mr Chair, and I believe I may be able to assist with some of the uh, points raised. I don't know if I'll be able to make it simple enough for a King's College old boy, but I'm certainly uh, going to try my damnedest. Uh, Mr Chair, the... <laughs> Jealous of what? Um, Mr Chair, the issue at hand, it comes down to a clash between two similar but really quite different concepts. Uh, one is affordable housing. Uh, and the other is housing affordability. Uh, and on the one hand, when you talk about affordable housing, uh, you talk about a certain number of homes being available at a price for a segment of the market. And many of the interventions that are proposed by the political left are what I would refer to as affordable housing initiatives. Let's have inclusionary zoning to try and section off a part of the market at a certain price. Let's have the government or some government-related uh, entity uh, develop housing because they will somehow have uh, different means and motives uh, from the private sector. Uh, let's have some sort of subsidy for people uh, to afford housing. And Dennis O'Rourke, not much gets past Dennis so Rourke. I told the House that I was describing the policies of the political left, and Dennis O'Rourke has correctly surmised that I am describing his policies. Not much gets past Dennis O'Rourke, Mr Chair. Uh, but Mr Chair, the problem with the affordable housing agenda, as opposed to housing affordability, uh, is that you actually cannot have affordable housing uh, without housing affordability. Uh, because the reason housing becomes unaffordable in the first place is that there is a shortage of housing supplied to market, and when that happens, inevitably, there is going to be a bidding war uh, that those with the least income are going to lose. So until housing becomes affordable, uh, you are not going uh, to achieve housing affordability. Uh, so, Mr Chair, what will it take to increase the supply of housing supplied to the market, uh, therefore achieve housing affordability across New Zealand, and therefore make it possible uh, for there to be more housing that is affordable for those uh, with the lowest income? And it's interesting, Mr Chair, to hear Materia Ture referencing the median multiple measure, a measure that has been popularised by my good uh, friend Hugh Pavlicic uh, from Christchurch, uh, who is one of the co-authors of the Demographia survey. And I wonder if Materia Ture has read carefully those Demographia surveys, and I wonder if she's spoken to Hugh Pavlicic or Wendell Cox, and I wonder if she's discussed what she's read with Julianne Genta, because what those reports say in no uncertain terms is that the reason we have a shortage of affordable housing in New Zealand, as with any other market, is that we have adopted land use planning laws that constrain the amount of land upon which people are able to build, thereby leading to a shortage of housing, thereby leading to a bidding war that not everybody can win, and those with the least money end up losing and end up with a shortage of housing that they are able to access. Mr Chair, the economics of it are that simple, and it is very good to hear uh, that Materia Ture has become a convert to this line of thinking, refer referencing the Demographia International Housing Affordability Survey, something, Mr Chair, that those of us on this side of the House have long looked to as a guide for making better housing policy. But, Mr Chair, if we wish to follow in those footsteps, we need comprehensive reform of New Zealand's land use planning laws. It is not good enough that councils are able to draw a line around a city such as Auckland, such as the metropolitan urban limit, and say thou shalt not build beyond that line. That has created an enormous shortage of land, which has created an enormous shortage of housing, which has left people unable to afford any home whatsoever. Finally, Mr Chair, we must reform the way that we do 
uh, infrastructure funding. Presently, the councils co cover too many of the costs. Central government gets most of the fiscal benefits, and that is why councils are unwilling to build more housing. What this government really needs to do is reform those underlying fundamentals, not tinker, as Materia Ture has suggested in her amendment. Grant Robertson.